Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today I am on a very special easter egg hunt. As you have probably seen from my other videos and shorts, easter eggs are not only hidden in computer games, but can be found on silicon chips as kind of silicon graffiti, if you will. I call these little scribbles silicon doodles, and they are quite rare. I started to search for silicon doodles only a few years ago, and I am only aware of a few hundred doodles being documented. With the social media community revealing such easter eggs being rather small, it is always a thrill to open up a chip hoping to find a new one. So you probably ask yourself where to look for doodles. They are actually randomly distributed. Many American semiconductor brands have here and there placed interesting doodles, the top ones being AMD, Digital, HP and Dallas. Applications in which easter eggs are hidden range from memory ICs to television ICs, power management ICs, digital signal processing and CPUs. But there are also European brands active in silicon graffiti, especially Philips and Siemens have really nice doodles. I recently discovered that mobile phones can have chips containing easter eggs, just like this Infineon chip which is used in the Apple iPhone 4. Which brings me to this video. So today I will check out this vintage mobile phone produced by Siemens, retrieve the ICs, decap and investigate them via microscopy in order to find out whether there are any interesting easter eggs hidden. Ok, so this is the wood grain version of the Siemens S4 mobile phone, which was released during the Cebit exhibition in 1995, so almost 30 years ago. It uses a 900 MHz PGSM band with full voice codec. In those days, one could pull out the antenna for better reception. Isn't that amazing? The S4 is actually called C2550, which is written in the case where the battery is usually placed. Off camera I have disassembled the phone and I found this sandwich PCB. One contains two nice chips made by Siemens and surprise surprise on the flip side is yet another very promising candidate made by analog devices. Let's first look at the Siemens part. The smaller I see is the Siemens PMB2900H SQFP and from the internet I get that this is a GBBC chip, a GSM baseband codec produced in Austria. The larger IC is PMB2705F in a QFP160 package. In my research I found out that this is a GSM one chip logic device or short gold for European mobile phones. Ok, so that is why it's written gold on it. On the same side of the small PCB there is a Sony CXK58257A, a CMOS static RAM. Now to the other side. The analog device chip is the ADSP21 MSP59 which is a mixed signal DSP. This one is optimized for voice band applications such as speech compression, speech processing, speech recognition, text-to-speech and speech-to-text conversion. Last but not least, there is this AMD 29F04D 120EC, which is located next to the AD chip. It is a 4 Mbit 120nS flash memory. Ok, let's detach the ICs from the PCB and then start to decap the chips one by one.
Okay, I think that went well. These are all the ICs that I removed from the PCBs. So let's decap the chips one by one, starting with the Siemens versions. Let's take a look at the ICs. Unfortunately, the large Siemens chip broke in four pieces. The smaller chip, however, stayed intact, but the epoxy could not be fully removed. Both ICs will undergo DMSO treatment. I will do this off camera, but refer to my other video if you are interested to watch the procedure. The SRAM could be retrieved without any issue but also there are still epoxy residues and also a poly emit layer on top of it. The AMD flash memory went perfect, however. I have also decapped successfully the two tiny ICs, which were on the other sandwich PCB. I did not talk about them before. These are the Siemens PMB, 2200 and the Siemens PMB 2401. Now let's focus on the centerpiece of the video, the ADSP. Luckily this went really nice. The decapping was flawless. The silicon is a beauty, isn't it? Now let's check it under the microscope. So I checked the Siemens IC and yeah, there's a heavy polyimid layer coating still the silicon surface, but I found this cross here, this X which I will investigate further once the poly image layer is gone. So I think we have to park that for a minute. Now let's check the analog devices chip. Let's try to zoom in and see what we can, can find. And oh my God, look at this. That's so cool. That's really an Easter egg. This is a hatching dino. Oh my God, really amazing. Okay, I think it's time to swap the cameras and, and record some 4K footage of this hatching dino. Okay folks, time to conclude. I hope I could give you some insights into my hobby hunting for silicon doodles. This S4 mobile phone from the mid 90s is a perfect example why this makes it so interesting for me. 
the analog devices chip with the hatching dyno was already documented. However, I could not find the chip anywhere to buy. But looking into obsolete hardware like this phone is simply part of the Easter egg hunt. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share your comments, and watch out for my next videos on this and related topics. So finally, the polyimid layer is gone. So this is the broken Siemens chip. Apparently it's an M687, second revision from 1993. So let's look for the doodle. Oh yes, and here it is. So it's actually, it's actually a, a guy. It's, I think it's, it's a cartwheeler. So this was the German chip and I know that Siemens, now Infineon, has its headquarter in Düsseldorf and this is really one of the symbols of the city's Düsseldorf, the cartwheeler, children doing cartwheeling. So look at this cartwheeler, isn't it amazing? I love this doodle. Finally, the last Easter egg was found. Happy Easter to everyone.